Hello, my name is uh, Chris. I uh, work for Mason County PUD3 and I'd like to teach you a little bit about uh, electrical safety. Uh, this is our uh, what we call safety town. This is basically a, uh, a scaled down model of what our, uh, our distribution system looks like from, from our transmission poles all the way down to the service at your home. Uh, I'd like to start out giving you a uh, little bit of knowledge of where we get our electricity, where, where it comes from. Most of our electricity in Mason County we get from uh, uh, hydroelectric dams. The dams over in eastern Washington on the Columbia River where the electricity is produced. We have to transmit that electricity uh, pretty far distance all the way from eastern Washington over to Mason County and uh, we transmit that at 115,000 volts electricity. The, the really tall poles you see out in the county, the H-frame type poles or time signs, they're still lattice towers, 115,000 volts of electricity. Uh, that's way more electricity we need in our home. We only need 120 volts to turn on the lights in our house. So somehow we got to get that 115,000 volts of transmission down to the 120 volts for our house. And it comes into one of our 11 substations in Mason County. Uh, these substations are these uh, large fenced in areas, the chain link fences around them, danger, high voltage signs on them. Inside these uh, substations are what we call power transformers. And what these power transformers do is they take 115,000 volts of electricity and they reduce that and, and turn it into a smaller amount, reduce it down to 7,200 volts of electricity, which is our distribution voltage. Once the power leaves the substation, uh, we distribute it across the county at 7,200 volts. Um, we still need to get it down to 120 volts for our house. To get it from 7,200 to 120 volts, we use two types of transformers to do that. They're both distribution transformers. We have the pole mounted aerial type of transformers. It takes the 7,200 volts, goes down through the transformer, comes out at 120 volts to the home. Okay, some areas the electricity runs underground. Uh, where it runs underground, we have what the, we call these pad mounted or ground mounted transformers. Uh, you, a lot of you people have seen uh, these little green boxes at the corner of your lots or on your property and whatnot. They function the same thing as the aerial type transformers. They take 7,200 volts and reduce it down to 120 volts. Uh, I like to talk a little bit more about these ground mounted transformers. Since they're mounted on the ground, they're a little more, more accessible. Uh, people can walk right up to these transformers, they're easily to be around. Uh, you know they're also more susceptible to hazards and dangers. Uh, any number of things can happen to these transformers. In, in a big storm situation, a tree can blow down on top of this transformer crushing it. A lot of the times what happens is uh, people not knowing it will back off the other driveway and hit one of these transformers. They'll drive off the road and hit one of those transformers damaging that transformer. It can get twisted off its pad. It can get knocked upside down. Any number of things that can happen that can expose that transformer to hazards. Remember there's 7,200 volts of electricity inside that transformer. One important thing to know about electricity is electricity is always trying to go to ground. And it's going to take its path of least resistance to get to ground. What that means is it's going to go to ground the easiest and quickest way it can get through it to the ground. Uh, and one of the ways is through our bodies. Our bodies are mostly made up of water and water is a very good conductor of electricity. Watch what happens to little Susie here where she gets too close to that transformer. She's going to walk up to that transformer. She doesn't even have to touch it. She just gets close. Electricity jumps out of the transformer, travels through her body to the ground, electrocuting little Susie. That's why it's really, really, really important we teach you guys not to play around these transformers. They're not, they're not playground equipment. They're not lawn furniture. We don't want you sitting on them or standing on them or being anywhere around these transformers. They're very, very dangerous to be around. So we teach you guys just to, to be aware of your surroundings and not play around these transformers. The next thing I like to talk about are down power lines. Uh, what happens is we have a lot of trees here in Mason County and when the wind starts blowing real hard, the wind blows into the trees and the trees blow into the power lines and knock our lines right down off these poles. Now sometimes it's really obvious that these power lines are dangerous. So the line will be jumping and arcing and bouncing on the ground like that. Now it's fairly obvious that that's a dangerous situation there. We're not going to walk up to that power line or be anywhere around it. So this power line just laying here on the ground like that, it's not jumping, it's not arcing, it's not making noise. That doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Again, a little girl just walks up to that power line, she doesn't even have to touch it. She just gets close to that power line and that electricity will arc out of the power line through the little girl's body again trying to get to ground. She didn't even have to touch that power line, she just got close enough. So. It's really, really important if you guys see anything dangling down off our poles, any lines that are falling down off those poles, 
don't go anywhere near that power line. And it's important to remember that uh, it's not just power lines up there on their poles. There's cable TV up there, there's telephone lines up there, there's fiber optics up there. You know what, they're all black and they all fall down and nobody knows the difference between all those lines. So if you just assume that it's always a power line and not go anywhere near that line, that's the best way to keep safe. Uh, just keep as far back as those power lines as you possibly can. We want you to turn around, walk back the way you came from and to tell the first person you see, call 911. They'll contact the PUD and we'll come and we'll make that situation safe. Sometimes the power line can come down on top of a vehicle, whether it be a big storm situation, maybe your car driving down the road in a, in a snowstorm and a tree comes down right in front of your car and in the process it knocks the power line down on top of your car. Real dangerous situation there and it's, it's important you know what to do if a power line does come on top of your car. Uh, one thing to remember is electricity, like I said before, is always trying to go to ground. Well, your car has rubber tires on it and the electricity can't flow through rubber. Rubber is what we call an insulator. Uh, it insulates electricity from getting to the ground. So as long as you stay inside your car, your truck, or your school bus, whatever vehicle you might be in, we ask you to stay inside. Do not get out of your vehicle. As long as you stay inside your vehicle, you're going to be okay. The electricity can't get to ground. It can't complete that circuit. But the second you try to get out of your car, somebody else tries to get into the car, the electricity finds a way to get to ground. She gets electrocuted. She also electrocutes everybody inside the group. She's standing on the ground right there. She completes the pathway for the electricity to get to the ground. As soon as she touched that car, the electricity no longer had to go through the rubber tires. It went right through the little girl to get to ground. It got to ground, electrocuting the little girl and everybody inside the school bus as well. So it's really, really important for you guys, if you're ever in an accident or anything like that, where a power line is down on your car, stay inside your car, call 911, honk on the horn, yell out a window, but don't. Don't get out of your car until the PUD has safely removed those lines. Next thing I like to talk about are what happens when trees grow up into the power lines. Uh, again, we have lots of trees in Mason County. When a tree grows up into a power line, makes contact with the power line, it can actually conduct electricity. If you were to walk up to a tree at the same time as going to the power line like that, very good chance you could get electrocuted. Uh, trees have water in them, moisture in there. Water, again, is a good conductor of electricity. Tree branches that grow up in the lines like that could very well conduct electricity. So we just teach you that it's really, really important if you guys are going to climb trees or be around trees, it only takes a few seconds to look up in that tree first. Make sure it's clear of any wires. Make sure there's no wires growing up in that tree. Uh, be aware of your surroundings again. Uh, make sure it's safe. If you're, if you're unclear if it's safe, you're just not sure, it's probably a good idea to choose a different tree to climb. Again, call the PUD, we'll come out and we'll trim those trees up and make it safe for to be around. Well, there you have it. There is a, our demonstration on how to be safe around electricity. Uh, the most important thing I can say here today is, you know, be aware of your surroundings, be safe around electricity. If, uh, if you respect electricity and know that it's dangerous and, and not be around it, it's probably the, the safest way to be. You know, if you have any questions ever, uh, feel free to call the PUD and we'll, we'll answer your questions at any time. Thanks.